Welcome, and thank you for joining us. My name is Lauren Sauer, Director of Events for Jamie Scott and Associates, your host for today. This call is meant to be an interactive session. The questions are more than welcomed. They are encouraged. Should you have any questions during the presentation, please use the question feature located on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Type the questions in the text box, then click the drop-down menu to send your message to the host by selecting Submit. Now I'd like to introduce you to Sandra Ginovellis the U.S. Marketing Director of Telehealth America. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming uh, to Transformation of the Digital Media Industry uh, session. I would like to take this moment to introduce our two speakers for today. We have Chris Wallace, VP of Channels for CD Networks, and he heads the CD Networks Global Channels team. Uh, Chris has 18 uh, years of experience spanning CDN, data center, and cloud services. Also, he was instrumental in the success of BitGravity, Digital Pipe, and Exodus Communications, where he helped define co-location. Uh, Fred Canone is the Director of Sales and Marketing, and Fred has over 25 years experience and executive management, technical sales, uh, marketing for data center and hosting providers, international voice, IP, and data carriers, as well as global trade intelligence. So uh, Fred will, will kick off this presentation, and we welcome them both. So Fred, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, it's good to be with you. Uh, appreciate everyone um, visiting with us today, and hopefully uh, we will um, uh, shed a little light on what's happening with the uh, digital media and certainly what's changing uh, in the environment that we live, since every day uh, really brings a new uh, new challenge for all of us and um, and, uh, instant, and some instant transformations we're beginning to see. So I'd like to simply start with a little bit of the outline for what the discussion today is going to be. So be, briefly, we'll uh, introduce ourselves. That is, uh, there will certainly uh, the telehealth networks and our relationships. Talk a little bit about uh, what uh, our friends at Gartner are predicting uh, for this year and, and certainly beyond for the industry. Uh, just a, a brief introduction for uh, for those of you that don't know uh, Telehouse America, essentially uh, who we are. And then of course we'll uh, turn that over to CD Networks and 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 obviously our friends there, uh, Chris, will talk about. Uh, uh, certainly what's happening uh, with CD networks and how they view, uh, frankly, their world and, uh, and the impacts that they're seeing uh, going forward. So without further ado, let's move on to the next slide. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, we'll just talk about uh, a little bit about who we are, what we're doing. So uh, we uh, are privately held organizations owned by uh, in major part by uh, KDDI, and KDDI uh, certainly is a global second largest Japanese uh, provider of telecommunications, so they certainly operate a global network. Telehouse is their uh, global data center and co-location brand managing currently, and we'll talk about about 46 facilities around the world. Uh, also, uh, KDDI is also a cloud service provider at, at many different levels, including uh, what we're uh, coming to know as cloud services and cloud computing, uh, as well as certainly our friends that are with us today uh, at CD Networks uh, in the form of delivering uh, the content delivery uh, for a, a variety of global brands uh, around the world. So moving on. Uh, uh, let's go back. Just a little too ambitious. Uh, okay. Uh, one more time. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Well, let's talk about. Uh, oh, maybe I can go back. Yes. Okay. So a little bit about uh, sort of vertical explanation. Uh, what KDI is doing these days, essentially, um, uh, uh, certainly optimizing uh, uh, and improving upon CDN's uh, technology, essentially reinforcing the network competitiveness and ultimately providing value. And clearly, CD, CD Networks, although uh, I'm sure Chris will do a better justice to this, uh, is, is in the business ultimately of improving the quality of services business uh, efficiency by delivering their 
uh, global distribution, a network distribution platform. And ultimately, the idea for all of us is really to provide uh, accessible, affordable, and really high-quality services for our clients. And certainly, their objective, uh, notwithstanding Azure, is to be the number one uh, content delivery platform. So moving on to ahead to um, what uh, Gartner's predictions are that we talked about at the top. Uh, essentially, they're predicting, among many things, uh, and, and again, this really speaks to the trend uh, uh, of this, uh, of the world that we live in today, and certainly the topic at hand, is that 90% of the technology spend going forward will be outside of the strict IT environment. Uh, and for, for those of us that are a little bit older uh, and, uh, and understand sort of the evolution of how this has come to pass, this is really a major, major uh, change in uh, how resources ultimately will be spent. So traditionally, as you all know, uh, when we talked about uh, technology spend, it was always focused purely in the IT environment of organizations, and now we begin seeing that that really is, is really changing uh, dramatically. And to that end, uh, and in conjunction with that, uh, ultimately to wind up managing uh, where those resources go and to what benefit, organizations ultimately create the role of chief digital officer as part of the business unit leadership. And ultimately, this will, uh, in fact, become a new um, uh, board or seat member at the executive table for most organizations. So with that much spend or that much resources being out outside of the traditional IT environment, no doubt that this is playing, going to need and play a greater role in the overall business making of of the corporation. Um, also, uh, Gartner's predicting, and again, uh, in line with the same trend, is that by 2015, 25% of organizations will have a chief digital officer. Uh, and, and the reality is that we actually have uh, at least that, if not a greater uh, chief digital officer, but they're currently have different titles, interesting. But the work that we're doing certainly uh, the folks that we talk to from the telehouse point of view, Chris talked to this we'll talk, uh, forward, is that uh, uh, even the traditional titled IT folks are playing a greater role in this oversight area. So moving on. Um, uh, so where's the shift? What's the shift? Uh, as a result of all that, clearly organizations are digitizing segments of the business, and I think this is happening, frankly, uh, with all of us, uh, and certainly moving uh, the resources that they're spending uh, in the marketing and, and obviously in other areas from the traditional analog really to the digital arena and ultimately digitizing all of that, certainly the research uh, and, and development budgets. Um, no doubt that this is becoming a, a much more pervasive uh, and certainly more important area in terms of keeping organizations and our clients ultimately informed uh, about what's going on in our businesses uh, and, uh, and ultimately, frankly, monetizing it. So uh, secondly, organizations are digitizing how they service their clients in order to drive client retention. Uh, and then thirdly, as I, as I just mentioned, that they're turning all this digitization into new revenue streams. So it's clear that all of us and, and, and we see some of it in terms of how the applications have turned out uh, or are manifesting themselves in the social environment are uh, really turning into um, not only uh, how we deliver information, but clearly uh, what and how we can improve our bottom, line, bottom lines associated with that information. So moving on, and then uh, finally looking um, uh, certainly forward to um, the distant future, the whole point is that uh, creating an environment where information technology no longer defines the rules. Uh, it is clearly a key in ensuring personal and enterprise productivity and innovation where technology is natural and pervasive that we don't need to hold it in our hands. It's just part of our lives. And, I, and again, uh, couldn't agree more with uh, Mr. Willis on this because even, in our, in, even at this stage of the game as we see you know, the movement to the whole mobile environment, whether it be phones or, for that matter, uh, pads, that uh, increasingly um, 
not just among young people, but clearly of people my age, are, we are um, moving forward to a more digital environment and relying increasingly more heavily on it. Uh, this year, just from a data center point of view, uh, certainly where, uh, where Telehouse lives, uh, uh, their forecast is that for at least this year, if not going forward, uh, they, they're still confirming strong growth uh, in data center usage and ultimately uh, leading to uh, an increase in cloud traffic um, uh, globally. And, and finally, a growing desire to access personal and business content anywhere by literally on any device by anyone uh, uh, is a sort of testimony by Mr. Merritt from uh, Cisco. Okay. Uh, and all of this clearly plays into what we're all doing these days, moving to a more virtual environment, our, our own virtual IT environment. So again, according to our friends at Cisco, it's clear that the next generation internet uh, will be an essential component to enabling uh, greater data center virtualization and a new world of interconnected clouds. Well, again, uh, again, this clearly speaks to the issue of uh, digitizing information as efficiently and as uh, to steal a word from our uh, medical friends efficaciously so that we all benefit uh, at whatever level we need it to benefit us for. Uh, just by way of uh, just quick introduction as we, uh, before we move ahead to our, to Chris uh, and C Networks, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Telehouse, we uh, own and operate about 46 data centers around the world currently. We started in 1989 and humbly at the, uh, uh, the first teleport on the planet, with the first telehouse on the planet at the uh, teleport facility in Staten Island, New York. All our facilities, of which we operate three in the United States currently, actually four uh, in the United States, are all SSAE, uh, SSAE 16 certified, uh, and, and we continue to specialize at our core uh, data center services, including co-location peering, connectivity, and uh, a variety of scalable IT services. The, the whole point is uh, Telehouse um, seeks to provide the best uh, customizable fit for uh, all of our clients, regardless of what size of the industries, uh, what size businesses or industries that they're in. Uh, and uh, clearly, uh, in terms of how we're positioning ourselves globally, uh, really designed to meet the, uh, not only the risks uh, 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 facing us uh, certainly in, in the next few years, but obviously also being able to take advantage of all of the uh, evolving technology, no doubt, uh, movement to the cloud as, as we move forward. So, um, uh, and you know what, I, I think I'm going to skip this, although uh, it's probably worth mentioning that um, uh, along with that from a network perspective, one of the things that Telehouse certainly believes in as, as core, core principle is that we're carrier neutral and our investment in that is, is ultimately our peering exchanges. Uh, where possible globally, I'm, I think the statistics, statistic is that 95% of all Telehouse facilities around the globe uh, have a public peering fabric, uh, regardless of whether we own it or it's a third party. And here in the United States, we operate NIACs and, Los and the Los Angeles, Los Angeles exchanges. So moving on, um, and let's see if we can get to the next slide. Okay, so I, I, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Chris Wallace, who uh, Sandra talked a little bit about uh, going forward, and Chris will uh, discuss uh, the CD Network's uh, view of the world and uh, discuss a little bit about what they're doing relative to the, uh, well, the major part that they're playing in bringing uh, digital information uh, to the rest of the world. Chris? Chris, you there? Yes, we are. Sorry, I, we were still muted at the moment. Thank you very much, Fred, for handing that off. Um, nice informative, and thank you, everyone else, for joining us today. I think it's a great opportunity to be able to uh, talk about this um, when we start looking at digital media and the way things are going into the future and how user adoption is happening. We're starting to see a lot of growth in other markets and um, some of the things that uh, media companies need to think about as they advance into those markets. 
So to begin with, here's a quick little sort of scan of the top 1 million websites that are out there according to Alexa. And as you can see, their icons represent their reach. The bigger the icon, the more reach they have. And there's one thing that's very common between every one of these guys. They all use content delivery to deliver their media throughout the globe. In the world that we're going after, when companies are looking at the creating media and things like that today, they need to think about where their content is going to be consumed. And here you can see the largest number of users are basically in Asia and Europe. Those are markets that are not necessarily right here in the United States, that we need to think about delivery and how we can reach these users with the best user experience. And in this graph, what we're showing is that uh, the market or the um, importance of performance in your site can be a make or break towards the success. If you don't have a fast performing site, your users will leave and you will end up having to reacquire those users in another direction. And in this particular graph, one of the things we like to point out with going back to where the biggest growth will be coming from, when we look at it, 44% of all users on the internet are in the APAC region of the world. And in this particular element here, we see that the APAC region is roughly 24% penetrated. There is a huge growth opportunity in the APAC region, and that's one of the things we really want to talk about on how companies can expand and gather these eyeballs in these markets. So let's begin with a little bit of how do web pages work. Uh, to begin with, the, the simple mechanics of a web page has changed fundamentally over time. It's no longer a picture and text, but now it's a combination of resources that need to come together. These are like APIs, small objects, large objects, scripts, and so on. So in this particular example, uh, this is a website or a company that has one website located in, or in Chicago, or we'll call this the origin, the web server. And we show a path directly to the server, and if it happens to be a surge of traffic or routing failures, the content could be disrupted or slowed down from congestion because it relies on one location to fetch its main data. Therefore, if you replicate your site to the edges of the Internet, you will be able to redirect the users to route around any user experienced problems. So adding even a, a little bit of a layer of complexity here, when websites are generating real-time data, this is stuff that cannot be created or stored ahead of time. This is called dynamic content. This content, which might be an API call or web services, secure transactions, this content cannot be predicted. It changes for every user and is the heart of the user engagement, which drives adoption. To give you an example of this type of an adoption, this is one of our customers, Talking Tom. I think a lot of people have probably heard of Talking Tom. He's been downloaded over 400 million times. And they have had a great success with this app and it continues to become very viral worldwide. When an app like this becomes successful, this could be a real nightmare for a company. A good problem, but a real problem. And in this example, they did not have time to build out facilities to handle their growth. They had to find a partner that could scale and provide a fast, consistent experience and provide 24-hour support. And they found all of this with CD Networks. So why does this really matter? And it's really, as the slide's coming in slowly for me, sorry, um, the thing that's really important about this is that companies are looking at the growth markets. And businesses need to think about performances or their performance needs when they go into these markets because the Internet is still maturing in some of these areas and you need to have a solution that can still guarantee a good user experience. So let's go through this. And let me actually take an opportunity of really why this is important. The further the web server is from your users, the slower the response and less impactful the user experience is going to be. And this is 
where CD Networks comes into play. We are a service provider who enables the use of our technology and resources without the requirement of buying hardware or software. Our solution can be, can be bought and placed into services in a modular fashion. We also have a global network. Our footprint is truly everywhere. We have nodes in over 140 locations around the world and a large network of highly scalable and redundant servers on every continent and almost every developed country as well. And here's an example of our network map. As you can see that it is fairly extensive. One of the things I also like to point out, uh, we're also one of the only, we are the only provider that has full deployment inside of Russia. And Russia has seven different time zones. How do you manage all that? And that's where our customers come to us to be able to use that. And having a footprint like this is extremely valuable. Here are some of our customers. All of these folks rely on a CDN to basically deliver their content and create the best user experience and also consistency for all of their users. So our customers, they can use any part of our suite of services. They're designed to be modular and can be applied in stages or all at once. Some companies come to us for just one need like China or Russia or maybe DNS, we're able to help them individually. And on top of that, all of these services can be combined with our PCI compliant backbone, which enables more of a commerce and secure transactions when it comes to delivering digital media and content that needs to be secured. Again, why is this important? We are committed to providing scalable growth at the best performance. We constantly measure ourselves to be the best performance for our user experiences. Now, one of the things about um, China and why we have gone there is mainly because of one thing. Our customers require it. We realize that we have to be able to help our customers get through challenges that are in other parts of the world. So therefore, when we look at uh, the Great Firewall, sites get blocked every day. Bandwidth gets constrained, videos stop, HTTP timeouts occur. And the only way to get around these problems is if you're inside the firewall. As you can see, there's a lot of illegal things or forbidden items within this. So therefore, having someone available that can help guide you and give you insight through the regulations and through the processing and basically be your representative within the country is extremely key. And that's one of the things that we do here for you. And here on my final slide, one of the things I really like to point out here is that performance is extremely important to your media success, especially if you're trying to expand into some of these growth markets or even in areas beside your own zip code. We enable companies to deliver media to users no matter where they are in the world and performance is the number one element for us. Within that, I'd like to open up to questions and answers um, and open and see if there's any questions that we can help you out with. Great, so this is Lauren again, and we have a few minutes remaining, and Fred and Chris would be happy to answer questions. So as a reminder, if you have a question, please type your question in the question window located on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And it looks like this one just came in, and it is for Telehouse. Um, what managed services do you offer in addition to co-location? Well, okay. Well, thanks very much for the question. By, by the way, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's always interesting to, to see how, uh, you know, what's driving uh, traffic or how traffic is being driven around the world. Uh, we here in the United States keep thinking that, you know, we're sort of the center of the universe, but clearly, clearly not in view of those statistics. Back to the question. Uh, yes, uh, what Telehouse is doing is we're providing essentially 
uh, scalable IT support services, um, and they they vary in, in terms of what the clients want. The, the point is is that it, it's not a, a, a specifically packaged solution. Literally, it's whatever the client needs, uh, whether it be things like uh, simple monitoring or up to and including literally owning the process and by owning meaning the full responsibility for the uptime uh, and performance of the client's uh, both applications as well as network. Uh, I think one of the things that differentiates us from potentially other, uh, other competitive colleagues out there is that our clients could literally pick and choose the device of service that they need and when they need it. So, um, uh, so regardless of where you are on the planet, or where you need to be on the planet, even for that matter, if it's not in a telehouse facility, for example, that we'll be able to bring about that solution. And I think ultimately that's that's the biggest uh, differentiator uh, for us, and and our clients really appreciate that. Thanks for the question. Thank you, Fred. This one's for CDN. So I have a video portal and want to speed up my recommendation or recommended thumbnails to keep users viewing more similar videos. Is that something that CDN can help with? Yes. Are we online? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure I was still on mute. Um, yes, that is um, something that we help, with pe help people with every day. In fact, that gets back to the personalization. What, um, those are often small little XML files that sort of give the cookies of the user and uh, the type of user previous videos that they've watched and they need to process that stuff and what happens is that these are coined as web service calls and a lot of video portals are really trying to engage and get uh, longer engagements with their users and they find that by sending personalized recommendations at the completion of a video uh, it works uh, very much to keep people engaged to watch another video and another and so on and we find that with having this personalization really requires a, a strong web services call and we speed up all of those or we even help people redirect those to other web service farms that they may have around the globe. So if they happen to run different data centers, we can send the redirect to the appropriate data center as well. Thank you, Chris. Here's the next question. What type of cloud security options are available uh, both around services for TIA and CDN. Chris, do you want to take that? Sure. Well, I think for security services, there's uh, multiple angles to look at it. Um, when you look at media, a lot of the content licensing requires you to be able to secure your digital media. Um, a lot of times people will look at that as a secure token where they can prevent people from downloading files that are not authorized. Additionally, they may want to have HTTPS um, capabilities where they can lock down the users that can uh, have a direct connection to the servers. And uh, basically, we enable all of those features. We can uh, secure the content, including in geolocation. So if a particular uh, video site has licensing for only the United States or only Europe or a specific country only, we can actually lock it down so that only those users are able to see the content. So we have some users that are in other parts of the world where they do live broadcasts and they cannot let any users from outside the country see those type of broadcast. Uh, that's all part of the security controls that we have built into our platform for our clients. And if I could just add to that, uh, just from a general data center services point of view, frankly, as part of the, uh, uh, the scalable IT solutions that we provide, we, uh, Telehouse, can provide uh, a variety of different security, both uh, directly, uh, 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 directly as well as cloud-based security solutions for uh, clients that need, uh, that, need to, uh, that need it. And frankly, that's at every level, um, whether it be uh, simple virus protection on up to and including, uh, you know, authentication issues uh, uh, as well as profiling uh, and uh, analyzing traffic uh, for um, uh, for potential uh, violators of networks or, or for that matter, uh, uh, both internally and externally uh, for companies. So, Thank you. So we have time for just one more question. 
and this is for CDN. What type of tech support is offered for the CDN services? Uh, for a tech support, here at CD Networks, we have uh, a great supporter organization uh, from pre-sales to post-sales. Uh, from a pre-sales perspective, we have um, solution engineers that can come in to help you craft out the right architecture of what you need to do uh, to deliver your media globally or just within your uh, neck of the neighborhood. As far as other services, like after being a customer, we have the capabilities of working or our account management team will work with you uh, on a regular basis. We are available 24 hours a day and basically we help our customers understand how their content is being consumed. So we go through the log file reports, the dashboards, and so on so that our customers understand the best available resources that they have access to using our platform. Wonderful. Well, this concludes today's presentation. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And should you have additional questions, feel, please feel free to email info at telehealth.com for more information. The replay link will be available and sent to you shortly. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chris. You. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Have a great day. Thank you.